day, another journey. It was on the beautiful island of Saipan many years ago when I first met Ramon Dison, a former Philippine Basketball Association player. We played together in a team for a basketball league master's division. At Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, I'm going to meet again my friend Dison. Oh, you know! <laughs> Dizon played for a year with Royal True Orange in PBA where their team defeated Toyota to clinch championship in 1979. In 1977, he was Mokaa most valuable player. He was a member of the 1978 RPU team that won gold medal. Cousin uh, Manuel, uh, we call him boy in the Philippines. Uh, I used to watch him play uh, intercolor tournament uh, in our area, in our community. So that's kind of uh, looking at him and look at the, all the other older, older um, boys in, in our community, kind of uh, encouraged me to play basketball. You know, I started shooting the ball and all this kind of stuff, uh, just dribbling, you know, by myself at the backyard until I invite some, invited some of my uh, uh, friends to, to come to our backyard and play basketball. We are, we are nine in the family. Uh, I have uh, four brothers and four sisters. Uh, There's nine playing, of us, yeah. Only you was playing basketball? Or? The junior, we call him Johnson, he played a lot of uh, street basketball. He's very good, very good. Very, very famous, popular in uh, Cavite. When, uh, but he got married early too. So he played in Ta Tansa, Cavite, I think. Something like that. Like Tansa, I can remember if it's Tanay, Tansa or something. But he's famous there. He played a lot of basketball on uh, uh, street basketball. But he also played for, for PSBA, uh, just for a couple of years or something. As varsity? Yeah, varsity. Yes. Dizon, who is now based in Stockton, California, is into pharmaceutical business. At the time when I was, uh, I guess, uh, 12, 10, 11, 12 years old, um, there's a lot of street basketball in our area, you know, I mean, because in, in, in Sao Paulo, there's like uh, maybe four or five different courts, and they have their own names. You know, like Olic is uh, one of the place actually I grew up. Then there's a UIC who actually took us as kids to play there. It's actually about straight straight uh, away from Olic. You know, they have their own league there. Olic have their own league, and then there's also one in. Um, the Pitan and uh, the other side of Spain. But again, my dad is actually uh, doesn't like me playing basketball uh, because of what happened to him. You know, he was uh, stabbed playing basketball during his younger days. Upon the instruction of his father, his mother burned all his basketball uniforms, but it did not stop Dyson from playing basketball. His friends would keep his jerseys and shoes and would bring it to the court whenever they have games. My father never really know about anything about that until I played for the CRISPA Mini. Um, in, uh, I think, 72, 72, 71, there's a CRISPA Mini that was uh, uh, just a tryout held by Ato, coach of uh, San Beda. Um, our team, UYC, played for the mini commercial league. And um, we did good. 
two of my teammates at UIC, which is Ralph and Leo, made it to the national team, the mini national team. I did not. But I tried out for CRISPR mini at La Salle. And the story actually, when we went for the uh, tryout in um, EDSA, EDSA there's buses. You have to take the buses from Cubao to La Salle, you know, or Ortigas, I think. Yeah. So anyway, I guess I was the fastest of the team. So I ran to the bus and I left my teammates, maybe four of them was going to try out with me. So I look at them, so I, the bus is running, so I jump off the bus, and I was just rolling right on the street, and I got all scratches in my body. Oh. And I just stood up, pretend that I'm not hurt. But I could be hurting, you know, just with the scratches. Just pretend that I'm not, I'm not hurt. So I came back and waited for the, went to the bus stop, and rode the bus going to um, La Salle, Green Hills. And I was trying out and um, all scratches, you know. And I did good, you know. Out of uh, six of us who went to try out, I'm the only one that was picked by Ato to play for CRISPR. Actually, we won the tournament, or the, we called the Mika Mini. Actually, side by side during the opening of the Mika that year, we are beside CRISPR, and then Chito Besaga was you know, playing for Morocco. So I saw Joe Orchke, I saw Danny Florencio, Jun Papa, you know, and all those guys, Rudolf Bach, you know. I was star trapped by watching them, you know, while side by side with them at the parade. So, uh, how did your father discover that you're playing basketball? Yeah, okay. Well, it was televised on TV, you know, and then when they show the the the, the, you know, the team on the parade, you know, let's say they called uh, Miralco, so first it was the mini team comes out, then the then the men's team followed. So I guess he saw me on the parade, you know, and uh, when I came home that evening. He, I, you know, I didn't know that he found out that uh, I was playing. So he just talked to me, you know, oh, you, you play for Krishna now? And he's, he's a, a basketball aficionado, so he loves the Mika, you know. He watches Mika all the time, too. So I guess uh, he kind of get proud about it, you know. At Ramon Magsaysay High School, I played uh, on our third year. Because third year is when you start PMT, you know, you, you have to cut your hair, you know, the military cut, you know. So uh, my PE teacher asked me if I want to play basketball for the school uh, on our, my third year. And uh, I asked, I asked, actually I asked him, you know, do I need to still go to PMT? If I play basketball, I said no, you know, so I can keep my hair, you know. <laughs> so, so I end up like playing for Ramon Magsaysay. In Mag at Magsaysay, the basketball court, there's no board, it's just like a ring. Yeah. When I was 12, uh, we, I have a coach, uh, his name is uh, Ernesto Stanislao. We call him Ernie Buco. <laughs> Uh, he's actually the one who taught us how to be a team, uh, how to play a uh, actual the way basketball should be played. That you have a guard, two guards, two forward, one center, uh, organized basketball. You know, so he taught us to do that. And at that time, uh, when I went to CRISPR Mini, I saw. You know, uh, June Papa, I kind of uh, copy his long shots. I uh, kind of copy Danny Florencio's move. I kind of copy um, Ray Franco's move. And basically, just practice them, you know, like uh, during games or our practice, 
as kids, you know, we always, after the shot, we'll call the, we'll call the name, you know, like uh, the Daddy Florence move, you know, or mm -hmm. jump out the shot, you know, mm -hmm. or Ray Bronco's three ball, you know, those kind of stuff. So, so actually, I have my own style, but we love to copy those those guys, you know. Uh, Jaworski, you know, you to copy Jaworski. And, and then I guess the other player that we copy a lot was uh, Jimmy Mariano on how we shoot the ball like this, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. but he's a good shooter, right? I guess I'm good enough, that's why a lot of uh, teams on different places uh, invite me to play with them until even in college, you know when I was being picked up by PSB or by Nick Jorge to play for PSBA, uh, I was uh, invited to to play uh, outside uh, basketball, like in the provinces, you know. College, that's where I was uh, named uh, most valuable player on my uh, uh, senior year. After my third year, there was no most valuable player, but we were the champions, and I uh, I did a, a lot of a lot of good uh, games during third year at PSBA. It's under CBIT tournament uh, league, and then Muka came in. That's where I became the most valuable player. What year was that? Uh, that was uh, in 1978, and that actually gave me the passport to. To, to to try out for uh, uh, the national team, the youth. Ooh. The national team, youth, you know. Anyway, Hector Kama, J.B. Yango, mm. um, Billy Amin, Mike Cristobal, uh, uh, Marty Saldana, uh, Bonnie mm. Jesus, uh, also uh, this comedian guy, you know, became the boyfriend of uh, Chris Aquino. What's Joey this? Marquez? Joey Marquez, yeah, Joey Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Marquez. Anyway, uh, a lot of story uh, when we were on the national team, you know, we went to Pestasukan in uh, Sing Singapore. Man, you know, I mean, uh, just so fun, you know, experiences to First time to be out of the country and to take the the airplane, you know, commercial mm -hmm. plane to Singapore, and to be with the guys, you know. I mean, it was so many, so many good experiences with them, you know. Yeah. So actually, uh, the team it was Hector Kama, myself, uh, Marc Saldana, and uh, uh, Ojin Elbaza. We were, uh, of course, Dolly Rama. We were the youngest, you know, and uh, we had the less experience as boys or m between men and boys, you know. We are the boys, you know. So it was fun, you know. And uh, actually, being part of the team, and we were the champion in uh, the, the, the the Asian Youth Tournament. But in uh, Singapore, Pesta Sukan, we, we were second to Korea. You know, but it was a really good experience. And uh, actually, the 1977, I was already asked to try out but, uh, for the national team, for the youth team, but I was not uh, picked until the following year. And that also, also kind of uh, put me on the untouchable players. Uh, by the Basketball Association of the Philippines, Bob, who is headed by Lito Puyat. There's, there's a list of players that who cannot go to PBA. We have to stay there for two years before we can go to PBA. Um, but I made it to the PBA in 1979 mm -hmm. because Ning Ramos, uh, who is the manager of uh, San Miguel, and uh, my coach, uh, uh, Nick Jorge brought me to San Miguel Mica and not even a year Ning Ramos asked me to join the PBA 
So I was only 21, 20, almost 22 years old. 21. Okay, so Mon, tell us uh, about the championship between Toyota and Royal Troy. Okay, so. I joined PBA 79, uh, uh, the old Filipino, you know, I, I played a lot, you know, uh, because uh, we don't have no imports at the time for old Filipino uh, uh, pers uh, conference. The second conference, you know, we have a couple of imports, you know, auto more than 90 pounds. So I sell them, I will sell them used, you know, uh, because of the Yoyo Martores, Pagutanan, and Tony Torrente being the guards. Uh, but anyway, uh, on the championship against Toyota, uh, the per, it's best of five. The first, the first three actually, I was not used. I mean, not at all. I mean, not at all. You know, I mean, I was just not used. On the fourth game, uh, the standing was 2-1. Two, two, we were leading the best of five by two games to one. And if we lose that fourth game, the momentum will be with the Toyota. So anyway, uh, I, I didn't even put my, my uh, supporter. You know, but knowing that I would not be used anyway, you know. So anyway, uh, <laughs> in the second quarter, well, you know, Coach uh, Edo Campo called me. I was just surprised, you know, I mean. But we were, I mean, Toyota is leading by 17 points, you know. I mean, Paguntana is not doing anything. Torrente is missing a lot of shots, you know. So I'm kind of eager to, to help, you know. I mean, uh, I mean, as far as... Uh, uh, kind of, I, I hate losing. That's why when I when uh, Coach Edo Campo put me in, I kind of control the game. You know, I don't care if you're young Martin is there or something. I get the ball and try to, you know, control it. You know, and um, you know, uh, lucky enough, you know, uh, we get closer and closer and closer, and um, I made. All my free throws, but I miss one shot, and I made about ten points, and I'm the highest pointer for the Filipinos. And of course, you know the imports were made all the points. You know, I was there, really, really controlling the game. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm guarding the worst. He guarding our nines. I lost the twenties to the most, uh, the rookie of the year for that uh, year, because. Uh, well, the old Filipino, I'm doing pretty good. And when they announced the Rookie of the Year, it was this morning because he's Toyota, and of course, you know, he's much taller and most, most uh, used player, you know, com compared to me. A lot of uh, PBA players play the game, never experience what I experience, you know, because they never went to the championship. Plus, also between 78 and 79, playing for making the MVP for in college and getting the championship in college, being a player of Mika for San Miguel and being a player for the national team and being a PBA player in one year. Why did you leave uh, PBA at the height of your career? Well, you know, uh, again, you know, it was like one between two lovers, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, my wife, uh, my girlfriend at that time, my wife, you know, left for U.S. while I was playing, you know. So uh, I decided that, you know, uh, she doesn't want to come back and marry, get married in the Philippines, but he would just want to practice her profession here in the U.S. as a nurse. And of course, you know, I have to choose whether basketball or her. But I choose the one that is forever you know basketball is forever but Gilda 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 de Mesa Dizon from from Balik Balik San Palo oh okay yeah, yeah. and then uh, we blessed to have uh, two kids uh, three kids I'm uh, thankful for Ernesto Sanislao as my coach that started me to play basketball you know uh, Nick, Nick Jorge he is another one um, man there's uh I mean, all my friends that uh, I played with, you know, uh, in Sampalo. Um, I 
in uh, my team in um, PSBA, you know, and then um, so Ben Ubrique, Mauri Machas, Bill Santos, uh, oh my God, you know, Ernesto Esteban, uh, I can name all of them, but uh, being a leader of a team, uh, Roy, Roy Di Guzman, you know, Gary Barca, Help me in my life now too, you know, to how I manage the business and how I manage employee, how I organize, how I motivate people, and how to take care of uh, situations. You know. How would the people in Saipan, your friends in Saipan? I, uh, in Saipan, you know, I met all those guys that, man, uh, Rick Brand is my compadre there at Cusino. And this guy, uh, this guy, uh, Ferdinand De La Torre, you know what I mean? Ed Pineda, uh, 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 Elmer. Uh, Elmer, 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 Elmer Pineda, you know. And Des Pineda, you know. And just a bunch of guys there, that uh, Uboy Perez, you know. Uh, God, I mean, some, some Alex Juan Cuenco or something. Uh, and then... Paul Magnolia, uh, Governor Pichal, those are those guys in Saipan. You know, Saipan is a beautiful place to visit. But I heard he's a good um, uh, basketball announcer or something. His name is Alvin. Alvin Alvarez. Alvin Alvarez. You know. I was supposed to meet him in Vegas, but I guess he was chicken out. You know. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't show up here. You know, I was expecting him to be here. But anyway, you know, well, you know, you know, I mean, all those, uh, I mean, my family in, uh, in Saipan, you know, I would let, I would let, uh, uh, what's, what's the last name, Devosa, uh, Alvin, and uh, Ulysses, and you know, all those guys, you know. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, you know, you know, so those are the, those are the people that uh, help me you know, a lot, too. even my brother right now, Charlie, Actually, uh, he has a place in uh, in uh, Manila. I mean, uh, he plays a lot of golf in Manila. I mean, for people in Saipan, you know, like uh, the guys in Saipan who go to Manila, come and visit his place. He has a place called Pianello uh, in uh, Carlo Street in, by Luneta, across the across the Rizal Park Hotel. Just go there and uh, you're gonna have fun. You know, you know, just make sure you. I'm doing an a advertising for, for my brother. <laughs> His advice to aspiring basketball players. You know, when you play basketball, you know, it, it is, uh, you have to be focused on practices. You know? I mean, you need to practice, you know, there's no such thing that you're going to be good without practicing. You have to practice your shooting, you have to practice your dribbling, and you have to practice to lead. You have to practice to be a team player. That's number one. Be a team player. You cannot. You cannot just uh, you know uh, play basketball and you do everything. No, you, have to, you need to have a role. You can be. I believe in role players. You know. I mean, people, and then you develop yourself to be a star player. In America, Dyson continued playing basketball, but that's another story. Smile and wave!